will talk to us on petty cones over fiber products. Yeah, so thank you for the introduction. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the school for giving me this opportunity to present my work. So today I will be speaking on Betty Cones over fiber products. So this is a joint work with uh, Rajiv Kumar and my PhD thesis advisor, uh, Anand Naren Hariyaran. So this is the outline. Uh, we will define what graded Betty numbers are, what Betty tables are, and see some examples. After that, we will review some known results. And finally, we will come to uh, some of our recent results that we have obtained. So throughout the talk, I will be assuming that K is an infinite field. Uh, R will denote a standard graded K algebra, and all modules will be finitely generated. So what are Betty numbers? So suppose we have a graded module M uh, over standard graded K algebra R, then the IJ graded Betty number of M, uh, one way to define that is, it is dimension as a K vector space of uh, the Jth component of tor I M K. In other words, what we are saying is that if we have a graded free resolution of M, F dot, then the uh, ith 3 module that appears in the resolution has beta ij many copies of R uh, shifted by degree minus j. So we tabulate these Betty numbers into a table, which we call as Betty table. And uh, so the ij entry of this Betty table is beta i, i plus j, and not beta ij. So in the previous talk, Professor Deepankar defined regularity. So we can read regularity from the Betty table as the index of last non-zero row. And similarly, index of the last non-zero column gives us a projective dimension of M. And one thing here to notice is that I'm not assuming my rings to be polynomial rings or regular rings. So regularity of modules, uh, uh, so projective dimension of modules need not be finite. So uh, Betty tables are in gen uh, in this case, uh, infinite matrices. So let's see some examples. So if uh, my R is a polynomial ring in two variables, and if I take these two ideals, uh, they are generated by regular sequences, of course. So uh, its graded free resolution will be given by uh, the Kozul complex. The only difference is that we have to take care of the shifts, depending on the degrees of the generators. And uh, these are the Betty tables. So, for example, you can, we can say that uh, regularity in this case is 2, in this case it is 3, and projective dimensions are 2. Let's see a few more definitions. So, we say that a module M is pure if for every i, beta ij is non-zero for at most 1j. So, what this says is that if you consider a Betty table, let's say, let's consider this Betty table, so here you can see that in the column index by 1, there are two non-zero entries. So this is something that is not a pure module. Whereas here, it's a pure module because you take any column, it contains at most one non-zero entry. Uh, a pure module is said to be linear if, if the non-zero entries appear in a single row. So for example, this table is a Betty table of a linear module. And a standard grade K algebra is said to be Kozul if uh, the residue field has a linear resolution. So for example, its petty table will look something like this, with this entry being equal to 1. So what we do is we generate a cone of all finitely generated, uh, Betty tables of finitely generated graded R modules, so which we call as Betty cone. So uh, it is uh, all non-negative rational linear combinations of Betty tables of finitely generated uh, graded modules. So the CIs are rational numbers, non-negative. And we have its subset, uh, namely Betty cone of pure R modules, in which we consider linear combination of Betty tables of uh, pure R modules. So we can see that uh, this is clearly a subset of this set. And the natural question that one can ask is, uh, when does the equality hold? In other words, when can I write uh, Betty table of any module as rational linear combination of Betty table of pure R modules? And we have some results like Eisenberg and Schreier in 2009. They proved that if your ring is a polynomial ring, 
then the equality holds. In other words, every Betty table can be decomposed into Betty table of pure R modules. And using this, they resolved the uh, multiplicity conjecture of Harzog, Huneke, and Srinivasan. So this statement was conjectured by Boys and Soderberg, and they had also provided a proof for D equal to 2. So this result is for polynomial ring. So after their work, uh, several people tried to analyze this petty cone for other classes of rings. For example, uh, this paper uh, studies petty cone for KXY modulo uh, quadric. Kumini and Stamp study, study it for rational normal curve. Georgita and Sam study it for uh, three non-collinear points in plane. And uh, let's see one result from uh, uh, this paper of Anant Narayan and Kumar where they consider uh, cohen macaulay standard graded K algebra with this special Hilbert series of dimension at most one. And they prove that in this case also the Betty cone and pure cone are equal. So if you see both the results, we have put some condition on the ring and we are trying to look for this equality. So natural question to ask is what about the converse? So suppose you know that this equality is true, what can you say about the ring? So we started with uh, looking for converse of this result in particular. And we started from uh, the case of Betty, uh, Betty Cones over fiber products. So I'll define what fiber products are. And uh, we'll see that converse of this result is true in some case. So what, are fi what is fiber product? So suppose you have two. Uh, standard grade K algebras with the same residue field K. Let pi1 and pi2 denote uh, the usual projections. Then as the name suggests, the fiber product is uh, defined as all ordered pairs, where A comes from R1, B comes from R2, such that pi1 of A is equal to pi2 of B. And this fiber product fits into this uh, Cartesian diagram. Let's see an example. So. If R1 and R2 are these two polynomial rings, then the fiber product is to put together all the variables and go mod by all products x, i, y, j. So you can see that these two are domains, but uh, this is not even an integral domain. And that is, so some of the properties are uh, as follows. So if R1 and R2 are standard graded with maximal ideals m1 and m2, then M1 direct sum M2 is maximal ideal of the fiber product and we have M1 into M2 equal to zero. We have the short exact sequence of R modules. And from, the, from, uh, from this it follows that uh, uh, depth of the fiber product is minimum of one, depth of R1 and depth of R2. So we can see that depth of R can take uh, only two values, either it is zero or it is one, whereas the dimension is maximum of R1 and R2. So if one of the R1 or R2 has a dimension at least two, then these are never Cohen, these are not Cohen Macaulay, the fiber products. Okay. So in order to understand the Betty cone, one has to understand free resolutions. And for that, we'll have to understand how the syzygies look like. So that's where we started. And we have this result that uh, if uh, R is fiber product, and if we consider a finitely generated R1 module, not an R module, then we can think of this uh, M as an R module. And considering M as an R module, its first syzygy module uh, is isomorphic to this isomorphism, is a graded isomorphism. So it can be decomposed as some copies of M2 with some appropriate shifts that come from generators of M. And first syzygy of M over an R1 module. And with some some more work, uh, we were able to show that if you start with any R module, then its second syzygy module can be decomposed into an R1 module and an R2 module. So we had to analyze uh, first syzygy of uh, module that is a submodule of a free module because first syzygy of M is a submodule of a free module. And once we have this decomposition, we can use this lemma to get some information about higher syzygies. What we were also able to show is that if R is fiber product and 
suppose there exists a pure R module of infinite projective dimension, then first of all such a module should have linear resolution and existence of just one module like this forces the ring to be Kozul. So we know that there is this result of uh, Avramo, Eisenberg and Piva which says that uh, ring is causal if and only if k has finite regularity, if and only if regularity of k is zero or equivalently every module has finite regularity. So in case of fiber product we can add this statement to the list as an equivalent statement that existence of one pure module forces uh, the ring to be causal. And in particular it follows that in case of fiber products suppose we have this equality then it forces the ring to be causal. And okay, so this is the converse that we have obtained. So suppose R is a fiber product with depth one, and if we have the equality of Betti cone and Pierre cone, then we do get that the Hilbert series of R should have this form, and in particular, it forces the ring to be Cohen Macaulay. So just in case you are wondering about depth zero case, because we know that depth of R can be zero or one, there is a partial converse that was obtained by uh, Rajiv Kumar and Anand Narend. So, so yeah, so in, what this result says is that it gives some characterization uh, in case of Betty, uh, in, in case of fiber products uh, for cohen mccollinis uh, in terms of this equality. So how much time do I have? I, two minutes. Yeah, so this, uh, this is a sketch. So um, what we do is because depth is one, we can pick a non-zero divisor from each RJ. Then we consider this ideal. And because of this equality, we can decompose this module into pure modules where this M0 has linear resolution, then we analyze this M0 to conclude that the ring should have dimension one. So in particular, it is Cohen Macaulay. And then we write Hilbert series of R in this form and show that this F of Z should be uh, a linear polynomial so that it has this form, one plus NZ. Yeah, so these are some of the references. Thank you.